It's the height of intellectual arrogance. Scholars around a table decide what sayings of Jesus they think are genuine. It's called the Jesus Seminar, where so-called experts try to demystify Jesus by voting on which of his teachings square with their preconceived notions of what he would or would not say. Today, we'll look at a blatant attempt to discredit the real Christ. Stay with us. From Chicago's Moody Church, this is Running to Win with Dr. Erwin Lutzer, whose clear teaching helps us make it across the finish line. Today, Erwin Lutzer begins a series on Rumors About Jesus, the Son of God Under Attack. Pastor Lutzer comes now to tell us about the Jesus of the Seminar, Away with the Manger. So, who is this Jesus whom we worship? Can we trust the Christmas story? Can we believe in camels and in angels and in stars? About ten years ago, a group of scholars got together and called themselves the Jesus Seminar. These scholars, uh, between 70 and 100, decided that they were going to look at the Gospels in new light and determine which words were said by Jesus and which ones weren't said by Jesus. They published their findings in a book entitled The Five Gospels because they include in it also the Gospel of Thomas, which is a, a Gnostic gospel that was found in 1945. I'd like to say more about it, but we can't for the sake of time. And so what they decided to do is to publish this book, and they researched and discovered that 82% of everything attributed to Jesus in the New Testament was not said by him. Only about 18% was said by Jesus. Might come as a surprise, but according to them, Jesus did not say, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Jesus did not say, let your light so shine among men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Jesus did not say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Jesus did not say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Now, the way the meetings took place was this. The scholars sat around and they decided to vote on 1,500 of the sayings of Jesus and they used colored beads to indicate their vote. For example, if you believe that Jesus actually said it, you used a red marble or bead. Pink means he might have said it. At least within it, there is something embedded that could be from Jesus. Gray meant, no, maybe, but probably not. Black meant, no, we're sure Jesus didn't say it. So fully, 82% of that which is in the New Testament was, shall I say it, blackballed. He didn't say it. Now, you say, well, Pastor Lutzer, why are you talking about this? I mean, you know, why don't you just tell us some other story? But why are you sharing the results of this scholarship? Well, for one thing, because the media constantly carries it. The Tribune some time ago had a detailed article about the Jesus Seminar and its findings. And if you were living in a house and you discovered that uh, its foundation was sand and that you'd be washed away in the first rainfall, suddenly you'd become very interested in the foundation. The very same way if it is true that what they have published, then of course our faith is uh, based on myths and sayings and uh, legends and all the rest. And our destiny depends on what we believe and whether or not the Bible is true. So I need to share with you the basis upon which these decisions were made. Was it because they, they came across some brand new archaeological find? No. Was it because they discovered these Gnostic Gospels? No, because the Gnostic Gospels are dated to at least a hundred years after the time of Christ and they contain some sayings of Jesus plus a whole lot of nonsense. 
And in no way, in no way do these Gnostic Gospels impinge on what might or might not have happened or what Jesus might or might not have said. Where did they get this? It's a good question. It all has to do with the assumptions, the, the presuppositions that you have when you study the New Testament, and I'll give you two of them, which are explicitly stated in their book, which I happened to read this past week. First of all, uh, the whole point is that in their minds, Jesus is a mere man. Maybe a remarkable man, but a man nonetheless. Just a man. He had no self-consciousness as being the Messiah. Therefore, he could not have made these statements that teach his divinity. Uh, the miracles could not have happened. Now, now, mind you, he did some miracles psychologically, but, but the, the miracles of the New Testament are impossible in a, in a world in which there's no personal God who's intervened in, the, in humanity. In fact, to quote them, the Gospels are now assumed to be narratives in which the memory of Jesus was embellished. So they assume that. Number two, second presupposition is if a statement was attributed to Jesus in the New Testament that the early church believed, then Jesus could not have said it. It was said by the early church. So the whole idea is that the followers of Jesus and maybe a generation down the line simply took an ordinary rabbi, very ordinary, and, and they, they attributed to him all of these sayings and all of these miraculous happenings, and that they created a Jesus according to their own liking. So with those presuppositions, the Jesus that you and I know simply never did exist. Now, it's very interesting that Donald Carson up at Trinity Seminary he makes a very interesting point in a detailed article about the Jesus Seminar. He says that what they've done is they have made a Jesus, and I'm quoting now, into a moralizing twit. Not sure what a twit is, but thought that if he said it, it must be good. They made Jesus into a moralizing twit. And then the early church was very creative in making these statements and so forth. But Jesus could not have said this. I want you to know today that we have